just do a little introduction. Okay. Okay. Can we sit here? Yeah, you're good. Okay. okay. I'll just get in front of the camera. Okay, so welcome everybody. You're at the Southeast Michigan Media Lab. I'm Michelle Rogers. I'm Director of Community Engagement and Editorial Training for Digital First Media. I also run this lab. Monica Drake is our presenter today. She's the Community Engagement Editor for the Open Press, and she's going to talk about citizen journalism. She sort of um, tailored it with editor contact information for Washtenaw County, but if you want other counties, Oakland, Wayne, or um, Macomb, we can provide that as well. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if you guys can go around and say your names and what kind of things you're hoping to learn here, that'd be great. So I make sure I touch on that. Um, we can start with you. My name is Kathleen. I am interested in an district blogging uh, program. Mm -hmm. And so this one interests me a little bit because I used to write for the Dexter Weaver gardening articles. Mm -hmm. And now with so many um, resources, it'd be nice to combine links, etc. I don't, I haven't seen your online newspapers, so I'm just wondering if there can't be some kind of links to pictures, mm -hmm. um, information, etc. Yeah, absolutely, and she'll cover that in the, mm -hmm. in the workshop. Mm -hmm. Good. My name is Jim Davis. I'm the marketing director for All Star Alarm, and I'm here basically then to learn more about some of the journalistic um, points versus platforms to use because mm -hmm. we're I think we're pretty dialed into our current layout so for me it's more about the writing styles mm -hmm. okay. yeah she'll yeah. cover that too she'll go over leads and, mm -hmm. and other things yeah mm -hmm. my name's Mike I'm just <clears throat> I'm interested in, uh, in learning about journalism in general and uh, what kind of role I can play and what do I need to do and what types of stories do you look for, and then being able to parlay that into some sort of journalism. Yeah. My name is Bridget Lavra. I'm the digital everything Mike said. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in efficiency and you know, journalism as a whole. I'm interested in how to, um, well, how to sell an idea or make initial contact about a story. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel that I have a lot of um, an introvert, so I, I like to write about ideas and not necessarily have you know, a million contacts in the county. But I live here and I've lived here for a long time and I want to learn how to um, make connections with people who are looking for articles um, mm -hmm. that I like to write about. Yeah. yeah. You don't seem like an introvert. Um, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> You're good at faking. Yeah. Um, my name is Andrew. I'm actually born and raised here, but just uh, came back from um, some years in Colorado. So I'm looking at how to use social media in terms of integrating it into involving the community in it uh, via Facebook, a blog, basic community involvement, and how to make people interact with that social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a new person. New person? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new person. Um, I'm Eric. What was the next one? Uh, just what you want to learn here, so I make sure I cover it. Well, I have a degree in PR, and I, I use it occasionally to help nonprofits out, so I just uh, do the other side of the fence of the press, and I'd like to come and see what you have to say about uh, your side of the, of the pitching post. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm glad you guys could come. You're just going to have to move over just a little bit because you're blocking the screen. Um, yeah, but maybe from the side there. Sorry, the table's not as long as it normally is. Okay, sorry. Okay. Can you see it? Yep, you're good. Right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I didn't change the first slide. It has the, to the open press. But. <laughs> I think, yeah, the, the interest here, I think, is beyond yeah. Washtenaw County anyway. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is how this will help you. Um, so um, what you will learn today is how you can get information into the paper. Um, if you're a business owner, public relations, or a volunteer, or somebody with a certain interest, like gardening, um, who wants to get events, business information, or write a column, or something like that, um, this will help you learn how to get it in the paper. 
Um, and also, if you regularly come across things that you think are newsworthy and you never see it in the paper and you wonder why, it's because our staff is small and we can't be everywhere at once. So if you call us and let us know about it, that really helps us out. Um, this, um, we also can get in, like if you have a son or daughter who has accomplished something or um, like if you know someone who has done something noteworthy, then this is how you could contact um, someone in the paper and get that information in as well. Um, and also if you're looking to get into the journalism field and want to get experience. And it helps us because we need you to be the eyes and ears of Michigan since we can't be everywhere at once. Um, after a focus group, we learned that several readers wish there was more happy news in the paper. And that was the consensus among all of them, was when we asked, what do you wish we had more of? They all said, less depressing news. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and, okay, so one thing we have in the paper on a daily basis is the calendar item. Um, so it's just like, it's a short, it's just a listing of all the different events that go on around the community. Um, so if you want, if you have an event going on, if you're with uh, an organization or a business and you want an event in the paper, this is what it would look like. It's just a short blurb and usually all those get in the paper because they're small. Um, but that's what it would look like just with what it is, the time, the date, and we can get you all the, um, this PowerPoint presentation too. Yeah, I posted on meetup.com and our Facebook page. Yeah, and did you have a sign, a sign in sheet or something? No, I can I can start one. Okay. So just yeah, if you give up your your email, I can send you the links and all that. But it's also online. Um, we also have a calendar online where you can just add it yourself. Somewhat edit it, or if you put it there, it will stay there. Um, well, I mean, I think it's it's automatic for like inappropriate words and stuff. Do you know? How yeah, it'll works? filter out inappropriate words, but for the uh, most part, you're going to enter the information, and then you'll have the ability to go back and edit it later if something changes or that kind of thing. Okay. It's but it's all on you. So it would stay there. Mm -hmm. right. It looks weird on this computer. We've been having internet problems. That's probably why. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks different. Um, well, I have some screenshots. Um, Does the online basically have a form that you fill out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you start a profile for yourself. So then it's easier in the future when you go back to log in and enter a new event. You don't have to do the whole profile and over. And this would only show up on the online version, not in the print version. Correct. You'd have to send a separate press release for print. Mm -hmm. And I have the emails in here, too, who you would send uh, calendar items to for print. Um, but this is the good way to make sure that it's online, because with print, there's always if people get the email or if there's room. Yeah, or, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a good way to at least make sure some good people are going to see it okay. on our online. Um, so that's what it looks like. Um, it just they, it has like pictures that cycle through of all the events and a listing of all the other events, and at the very top of the page. Here is where you add um, add your event. Um, and it's just and it's events and it's whatever the uh, website is. Just events that that website. So heritage.com or macombdaily.com. Or if you go to their homepage, it'll be right there, and you can enter information. Yeah. Um, and for print calendar submissions. You would email to asmith at heritage.com and uh, about two weeks in advance of the event. Um, so for submitting a press release or a story that you'd like to see, that you'd like to have in the paper, you would email the editor of the paper. Um, that's who you would go to first. And um, if it's a story idea you're trying to pitch and you don't want to 
write the story and then it doesn't go in and you did all that work for no reason, um, then first you would want to contact the editor. And I would suggest to call the editor too because editors get a lot of emails. And so when they all filter down, sometimes they miss it. So I would say send an email to the editor, then look up the editor's phone number and call and say, I just sent you this email. For me, if I get a press release or a story and they call me first, I'm like 90 times more likely to put it in the paper because I have it as part of my mind and I know, um, I remember them as opposed to the other 2,000 emails in my inbox. So, um, excuse me, what newspapers are we talking about with Heritage? Um, well, where all are the Heritage? Uh, the Selene Reporter, the Milan News Leader, the Chelsea Standard, the Dexter Leader, the Manchester mm -hmm. Enterprise, Ypsilanti Courier, the Ann Arbor Journal, and then the View in Belleville. And I'm sure it helps with any media, really, to call. Mm -hmm. um, and so for a story, I would call first and um, pitch your idea, say what you want to write, tell the editor that, and um, see, gauge his or her interest in the story. Um, Can I ask, are you getting a lot of email from national companies emailing you to run national story that you've got to go through, or are you getting a lot of local? So, so you're really being bombarded with a lot of just, mm -hmm. they're just throwing it at the wall and there's no real tie-in locally, is that true? Or? Yes, yeah, we get a lot of national stuff too that we really can't use, so yeah, probably, yeah, like every day. So that's why it also helps, because you know on the phone, they're like a legit person. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. So I feel sorry for you guys on your side of the fence, because my, what I've read is that you're just being surfed with automatic email blasts of constant story pitches, and it's really hard to ferret out what's, what's right for your readers and what's not. Mm -hmm. And that's really, I wouldn't want to know what I would want to job. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we're also um, encouraging more blogging partners, so that way we just link to your blog, and then we might look them over once in a while and look for content to repurpose with your permission. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so for a press release, that's more sent out to all the different media and it's, and it's written, the more that it's written like an actual article, the more likely we'll use it. Because when it's written like a newspaper article, then that's less work that we have to do. We can just copy and paste it. Because I know for me, I have a whole section that's in every Thursday that's pretty much, it's all press releases. That's all it is. It's, um, and so when I have two hours to get like a five page se five page section done and I'm freaking out that I always get the ones that sound like articles or that are the most like articles because that's a lot easier to do when they sound like articles and that's how all the editors are really because then they just put it in it doesn't have like the our organization is so great in there <laughs> that kind of stuff because that's I think what I see the most that I have to filter out of articles is we have the best organization in the world, and you have to catch that, because if you put that in the newspaper, then people won't think you're very credible. Um, also, I uh, never sent a press release or a story in a PDF. PDFs make it so it's you can't copy and paste the words, and that also makes it less likely to get in the paper, because if you have half an hour to get to lay out a section, you're not going to pick the one where you have to type the entire article all over again. So what do you, start, what do you recommend? I would say um, either a Word document or I uh, just piece it right into the email. Just a question. Um, it's, I seem to have a problem when I send docs and I'm running Office Word 10. Mm -hmm. Apple's uh, Macs can't open it. What do I need to dumb it down to? Um, no, they can't. I use Mac all the time, they can. But you need to start saving your Word documents as a DOC file format, not a DOX. Okay. When Microsoft made that change, they really bothered a lot of people. So if you just simply go into Microsoft Word, right. or Office, and mm -hmm. set it for DOC as a default, then everyone will be able to upload the document. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, that's the most basic Microsoft Word there is. So. I know, and that's what I just, and it's the Mac users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, would ha I had a problem with so I didn't know if it was 10 or what, but I will go in and change that. Mm -hmm. Or just paste it right into the body of the email, right. too, if you're worried. Um, a lot of people paste it in the body of the email and send the Word document, too, just to double and make right. sure we get it. Um, let's see. And also, um, send in pictures as a JPEG, um, and don't copy and paste it in the, in the email. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
iPad, even like the pictures not go through when they're just copy and pasted into the body of the article, or it'll sometimes like it'll have the images can't display from this person because it's not sure who it is. Or it'll be so big it'll crash your computer yeah. and frustrate how, you. Yeah. How big and little? What's the recommended? Um. For images. Again, well, our website automatically um, sizes it down, so I would say just as big. It's better to have bigger than smaller. Because then when it's stretched out onto the page, it doesn't look pixelated. So I'd say like what a regular camera would take. Yeah, I would rather be able to size it down then. Yeah, but for you print, you probably want anything over three hundred dollars prints, right? And so many of these cameras that have so many megapixels, you're getting just yeah. a giant depth of film. Uh, so I mean, you won't you won't be able to print that. I mean you you better mm -hmm. print any better. Well it won't be mm -hmm. print any better if you have a lot of depth. So I would say three hundred dollars inch. Mm -hmm. And that's printable, but not too giant. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, I don't, Michelle, do you know what the normal size of it would be? Um, that sounds right. I mean, we've never been real picky about it, mm -hmm. so we just size them down ourselves. But yeah, that sounds right. It's just that's new, standard. Some of these new cameras can take mm -hmm. pictures and have them, like you know, a ten megabyte like, file. It's just like huge. Yeah, but for the most part, people are using their cell phones. So oh, Michelle, that's, you know. That's yeah. <laughs> Usually, it's about. When I get them, they're usually what, like a thousand pixels by a thousand, between a thousand and two thousand by. That's usually about what most of them are sent. Um, and and uh, yeah, call the editor when you're when you're done sending the email and just say I sent you this email. Check your inbox. Um, and whenever somebody does that, I automatically put it in a, in a separate file that says important, make sure to print. Whenever anybody calls me, I automatically put their email in there. Can I ask a question? Like, yeah. The Heritage has so many different papers. Let's say you're, when you say the editor, do you have editors assigned to the like, files and somebody to go to the Dexter area, like the Dexter mm -hmm. leader, right? Mm -hmm. Should I contact that editor? Or, or If it's specific for just that paper, yeah. And the addresses are very simple. It would be just editor at dexterleader.com. Okay. Um, or editor at chelseastandard.com. If it's for all of them, you're hoping to get in all the papers, then um, you would email it to Austin Smith. Uh, he's kind of the point person, but he's okay. the editor of the Sling Reporter. But his okay. email would be asmith at heritage.com. But he's looking at the things that are like county wide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's not going to put a Dexter event in all the papers. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. Your best bet is to put that online in the eventful calendar. Okay. Um, but if you want, if you have like a general article, just about a topic like, I don't know, like gardening, <laughs> then that would be to everybody. Okay. Uh, um, let's see. And if you're sending a picture, make sure to put the names of the people that, that are in the picture. Um, then it's more likely to print as well, if you can say who's in the picture. Um, that's the thing that I feel like we've had people send us the is a lot of times they send us pictures without the people in it, and that's a big thing we like to do, especially if it's if it's a big crowd, then we understand, but if it's like a picture of three people and we don't have any other names, it's just good to have names, and then people can go out and get the paper and be like, that's me in the paper. And that's kind of what you guys, I mean, for your paper, you really try to, to tie to the local community. Mm -hmm. So you want to have all the baseball stories and the, uh, you know, Joe went to local top I mean, contest, real local. That's what their parents can say, hey, this is my kid in the paper. And that's really, mm -hmm. that's really your focus is that social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whenever you hear about that, let us know. Um, so there's a, this is an example of, well, I'm with the Open Press, so this is an example of some of our stories that our community submitted, like Rochester business, business owner wins Good Neighbor Award, and Choice for TAS program sells pizza kits to help uh, buy kids presents. Those kind of things were actually sent by community members. And I just, I mean, I read over the what they sent and put what their words into the paper. Okay, so the first thing um, with the newspaper article is um, the first sentence is called a lead. And that should be the most important sentence of your story. Um, the lead should be direct and to the point. Um, use short sentences and eliminate unnecessary words um, because a lot of people have short attention spans, uh, so they'll read the first sentence, see if they want to read the rest of your story. Um, so for a summary lead, that has all the important information right there in the first sentence, the who, what, where, and why. 
Um, it tells or summarizes the facts of the story um, and the most important information. Um, used most of, often with stories written in inverted pyramids, so with the most important at the top, and then the, it gets increasingly broader and um, less information. Um, so that creates interest and indicates important of, importance of stories and gives information quickly. Like I said, readers have a short attention span. If your first sentence isn't interesting, they won't continue reading. But most important, information early on. Okay, so this is an example. Um, and tell me what you think is the most important information. Police Chief John Jones discussed the city's crime problem with interested townspeople at a meeting Monday night. Jones agreed to meet with residents who have grown increasingly concerned about the safety of their neighborhood. The chief said more serious crimes were reported here in the last 12 months than during any year in the city's history. So what do you think is most important? Urban. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, when it says the most serious crimes were here, reported here in the last year, yeah, that should be in the first sentence and not the third. Um, and for this information, um, Tell me what you think that, sh what you would say for the first sentence. Um, and this would be more of an event featuring kind of story. The Utica Booster Clubs gave annual award at Banquet Friday night. Jose Flores, president of the club, presented. Charles Becker, former mayor, was named Man of the Year. For work with the club's youth program, Sam Smith, owner of Smith's Groceries, received Best Booster Award for attending all meetings of the year. So what do you think uh, should be in the first sentence? That Charles won Man of the Year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so possible leads would be the Yuka Booster Club named former Mayor Charles Becker as Man of the Year at its annual awards dinner on Friday. The Yuka Booster Club honored former Mayor Charles Becker as Man of the Year for his work with the club's youth during its award dinner on Friday. Um, and this is something that I see a lot in press releases, is uh, using first person in the press release. So saying, like, um, our, our organization. There's been times where I've accidentally missed that, and it'll say our organization in the paper, which doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, so, for instance, Larry Norman, Vice President for Enrollment Services, said enrollment at our school increased in 2005. And it said it should say the name of the school. Um, but that's the thing I've seen the most is saying our, and then we miss it if it's like just somewhere in the middle of the story and it says our organization or our group, um, or we did this. Um, also never put in your opinion if you want it to be an advice article and not an editorial piece. Um, so journalists need to be in the middle. They're not going to say this has been such a great organization, unless it's in a quote. Um, use the word said whenever you're, whenever you have a quote, because saying she exclaimed, he cried, she whispered, is actually an opinion, because you can't say for sure if she cried, that's an opinion of how you thought she was talking, so you would say she said with tears in her eyes or something like that. Um, and this will send this to you. This is all who to contact for all the heritage newspapers. And um, if you're interested in the other papers, like Macomb Daily, which is Macomb County, and Oakland Press, which is Oakland County, um, and Morning Sun, what all do they cover? Morning Sun, Morning. Mount Pleasant area. Mount Pleasant like area. Like three counties up there, yeah. So, um, and the Daily Tribune, which is like is Royal Oak. Um, if you are interested in submitting your articles to them too, then um, and we also welcome letters to the editor and guest columns, um, which that would be your opinion, um, and that's printed on the opinion page. Um, guest editorial should be under 650 words, so that's more of a column about anything that's going on in the news or anything that you feel is important. Um, and then a letter to the editor, it's 250 words, and that's on a specific article that was printed. Um, and Michelle, do you know, is there an email to send letter to the editor, or is it mainly that website? 
Um, well, actually, I, I put together the commentary page, so they can just send it to mrogers at heritage.com. Oh. But the editors, if they receive it, they forward it to me. So. Okay, then it's yeah. beautiful. That's good. I don't know if I got stuck with that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so here are some examples. Um, letters and guests' opinion should offer commentary on issues in the news, whether they be local or national. An exception is when an organization reaches out to raise awareness of a cause or event that has substantial impact on the community. Letters can be written from the heart, while lengthier guest opinions are typically more fact-based. Um, and here's how you would send in breaking news. So if you are driving and you see a car accident, well, not like, we don't suggest taking pictures or car while driving, but <laughs> just if you if you pass, and this is the, the news tip line, 734-429-7380. Um, and like I said, we'll be sending this to you. And that's, some, that's uh, a band, uh, how often do you, how long do you think they're at that? Um, basically, 8.30 to 5. Okay, 8.30 to yeah, 5. Yeah, but if you get to an individual editor's voicemail, their cell phone is usually on it. Okay. Yeah. So that just rings throughout the whole newsroom, mm -hmm. and um, then someone just, we have code that everybody can pick up that phone line, and then there's the assistants who pick it up from that time. Or I would say reach out on Twitter, um, just send a tweet and mention the newspaper's handle, like it would be Heritage News for Washtenaw County, and an editor will get that right away. Mm -hmm. Is the 734 for Washtenaw County? Yeah. So there's another number for Oakland County? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had that on my phone. <laughs> Oakland Presses is on 248. Seven four five four six nine nine. Um, and examples of breaking news are like a car accident, a fire, a theft, um, police were related, um, school evacuation, a missing person, or a missing animal. People like the missing animal stories. Um, and you take a photo, that can also be in the paper. Be safe and don't take a photo while driving. Um, and if you see an accident or fire and your phone is on you, just snap a photo with uh, your camera. For instance, with this one, there was a tornado which demolished a Goodrich home, and a woman took a picture of it and sent it in, and she got credit on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, if there are picture in the if you're, there are people in the picture, make sure you include their names, um, and include your name so you can get credit for the Sure. Yeah, I would also ask for credit because um, typically they don't give credit unless it's asked for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so make sure that. And with the articles you send in, make sure you let them know because if it's just a press release, usually public relations people don't don't want their name on it because they it's, I don't because they didn't always write it and we don't know who wrote it if it was just sent who it was sent by. So um, yes, put you that you want your byline on the article or on the picture. Um, we also have a, um, we started using Tau, the whole company started using a video platform called Tau, and um, that is 15 second videos, um, and, and if you just go to Tau.com, you can sign up and you can either uh, shoot it with your camera or with a webcam, um, and if you do, like, for us, it's, it's just like a, tw it's a Twitter, a video, a, tw a Twitter for video. Um, so it's just short videos and we have set up, I don't think Heritage has set it up yet, but for the open press, we set it up. So on our website, if this is gonna work. Yeah, it's not showing. Uh, they've had a problem with their internet provider and the, the page view, uh, the view of the pages. But I actually have it on mine, I can pass it around. Did it come up for you? Oh, okay. I'm just thinking for touts so you can see what it looks like. Like right now, I've been shooting touts of her on my smartphone, and so it's going live right now. They go up instantly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's what the page looks like. 
And then um, we've set up a hashtag and a widget on our website. So let's say if you are passing the scene of like a, a fire and you get out and you shoot a tout and you use the hashtag, what is it for Oakland County? Uh, the Oakland Press. So the you, Oakland yeah. Press, hashtag the Oakland Press. It'll feed automatically into their player on their front page. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the only thing that's not showing up. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, but it shows right there where that blank spot is. <laughs> that's usually, um, and it just feeds through all the most recent touts. Um, so they're just a short video. So if you put hashtag the open press, or um, I set up Macomb Dailies for hashtag Macomb Daily. And if you do the video to automatically go to the front page. So that's a good way to automatically get your information out without even having to really tell anybody. It'll just go there. All right, and then we can later, they, it provides, it's easy to share tout on social media. Mm -hmm. um, Google+, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Twitter, it's just in, it, you just push a button and it instantly goes out. But um, we also can um, create widgets to bring it in. And what was I going to mention? The, um, oh, it's embeddable as well. So we can get your embed code. And then let's say we're going to do an article on the fire. We could get the embed code from your tout and put it in our article. And your video will show up at a video player with in our article page. Do you have on your phone? Like, can you show an example? Looks like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, is yours working? Okay, yes. <laughs> you wanted the top, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can pass around my phone too if you want to. If people want to see um, what the player looks like on your phone. Fifteen seconds isn't very long. Yeah, we have professional accounts. We have 45, but the general public gets 15. Mm -hmm. But it's a little longer than Vine, which is six. But you'd be surprised at how much information you, you can get across. So let's say you're doing your gardening um, column. Um, you could do a quick teaser where you say, I just wrote about pruning roses. Check out my blog, da 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 da, -da dot com. It's a little promo for you. It gets your URL out there, and it lets people know what's your latest content. So I always recommend it for bloggers. But for breaking news, yeah, a quick clip of a fire, you know, and then it provides visual content. And you can do like five of them in a row, too. Yeah. And then when that feeds into a widget, it's one video after the other after the other all connected. Another great feature about it is that it has a reply function. So you can reply to someone's video. So I've had bloggers who write movie reviews. Um, reply with, let's say he wrote a positive movie, movie review or something, you can reply and it would be a video of yourself saying, you know, I don't agree with me, your movie review, I think blah, 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 blah. And then they're, they're strung together. So I think that's kind of cool. That's 45. <laughs> that was a lot longer than 15. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what it looks like when you um, make an account. Uh, um, you can also make videos on YouTube, but that you would have to send in doesn't automatically feed in. Yeah, you'd have to send the embed code or a link. Um, and then live streaming video. You made these slides, so I don't really know as much about this. <laughs> So live streaming video. Yeah. Um, well, that's what we're doing right now is using Ustream. So if you have an event going on or you want to provide live coverage of something, you can just set up a Ustream account. Then you can provide the recorded version to us to play. Let's say, for instance, you're, um, you're working public relations for an organization and they host an event. And if you live stream it and record it, you can send us the embed or the link, and we can embed that in an article that maybe you've written or we've written. And it's ustream.tv, right? Yeah. Okay, ustream.tv. TV. Yeah, TV. Or if you just Google it, it'll, it'll pop up. Mm -hmm. And links don't work. So that's the website. Um, I already finished. I did that quick. Okay, I have some other stuff. <laughs> um, so we also have, uh, we all have media galleries on our website that shows up on the front page. Um, so it's just slideshows. And um, so when it's, it's media dot whatever the website is. So media dot would it be heritage.com? 
Yeah. Okay, so media.heritage.com or media.theopenpress.com. And on there are all these different slideshows. So if ever you're at you're somewhere and you want to get like an event out or an event that you've gone to or any kind of information or um, even like wildlife pictures you took, just pictures that you took of anything really in the community and you just took a bunch of them, you could send those in to an editor and we could make it into a slideshow that goes on our website and those actually get the most views, more views than any of our articles. It's always like the number one story of the day that was viewed. People like pictures. Um, so that's one way also to get information out um, is to do, if you take a bunch of pictures, send them in. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, for social media, you were saying that you wanted to get mm -hmm. uh, your, have you, do you have a blog? Um, I've had a personal blog. I've been some with a company, uh, Tours Industry Wise, but looking Mm -hmm. um, so for social media, I think that social media is really helps with getting views for your blog or an article if it was published. Um, so uh, what I do is whenever I post a blog or make a blog post, I'll go to Facebook and you can search different groups on Facebook. Um, so groups that have something like something similar to what you're writing about. Um, so if you want to look up like a national, I should keep going with gardening, the national gardening group or whatever, like what would you be interested in writing about? Oh, uh, it's community development, so the stuff that's happening in the community, uh, be it business meetings or, you know, a YMC event or something like that, just kind of a, a mass pile of events, so you don't have to go to every site to find it essentially. Just go to one site and find all these events and how to get engaged. Whether you're, you know, got a kid in school or you're you know, retired and looking for a fun, you know, senior event. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. So if you would go, every community has a Facebook page. So mm -hmm. if you would like search their um, Facebook page or the organization that you're covering, if you look for their Facebook page, and then just you can write right on their group page and it comes up along the side. So if you say, like, check out my blog post or my article about uh, this event that's happening in, this, in your community, um, I've noticed that whenever I do that, it gets a lot more hits than if I just keep it to myself and don't spread it out there. So I'll, like, I'll go to about 10 different Facebook pages that are similar to what I wrote about and just paste the same little summary of my blog post and a link on all those pages, and they'll just come up right there on the side, and that's a good free way to get your stuff out there. Also, if you have a, a blog, you could go to all the different media places, media organization. All media organizations have a Facebook. So if you post it right on there to get more views. Um, there's also, uh, I think I have another PowerPoint presentation that I did on social media stuff. But there's also, um, like, you can, you can search for different organizations, different blogger organizations. There's different um, groups online that lists um, blogs. So if you search for different like blog types, sometimes different groups will have like the most popular. I know like parenting is a big one. Is there will be these parenting blog groups where it'll just list like the best parenting blogs. So things like that. And, and um, on all of the 21st century media, that's who owns all the papers. We all have a blog page, so it's what our website slash blogs. All of us have a listing of all the community members' blogs who have partnered with us. So that's another way, and we, um, you can email us with a blog post and say, I wrote this blog post, would you consider featuring it in the paper? And we will pull blog posts from our partners and put it, and put it in the paper as well. Um, so that's it, and that's an easy way too if you partner with us because it'll automatically feed in all your blog posts. You don't have to do anything. So, um, I don't know if anybody had any questions. I did that way faster than I thought I would. So, Michelle was talking about widgets and embedding, and I don't have a clue what those are. Hoping you can explain. Um, I wish I could show. Can you show that? Is it on your computer? Hey, why don't you? Yeah, because I'm using Verizon on here. Okay. Should I just show 
And I feel like that's why I went so fast, because I should, couldn't show any examples. Yeah. Actually, your PowerPoint is on here, too, if you want to go back to some Ooh. of those examples. OK. Um, so a widget is basically a, a video player. When we're talking about widgets for like Tout or YouTube, mm -hmm. it's a video player. Um, there are also other widgets that you would insert in blogs, like an audio player or um, a headline widget. It's just something that would be inserted to display. And um, the, an, an embed code would allow you, it's like some HTML coding, I think that you just copy and paste into your blog post, or if you're sharing it with an editor, you just give them that coding. And you'll see there'll be a, a button that'll say embed. You click on it, it'll provide that code, you just copy it, you send it to the editor, or you put it in your blog, and then that's going to pop in the player. That's like the information it needs to know where to grab that player and pop it into your post. Now, is that something through the lock spot, or is that only something with the other, I forgot the other? Well, box. like for Tout, for example, YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, an audio cast, anything that you're creating something, it's going to provide you with an embed code. Okay. Yeah, and then that, that you would pass along to the editor for an article, or if you are a blogger, you would use that code to pop it into your blog post. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, so it all work. I mean, all most website, um, or the way websites work, most of them will take that same embed code. It's not different for each different provider. So for like heritage.com, the same embed codes would work as if as your own blog. So like for instance, this is one that's just <laughs> that's live from here, yeah. So you can show her, yeah, where the embed code is. You'd hit that yeah, return. So you hit yeah, that one right there. Go down a little further. And, then, and there, see, allows you to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest. There's the link um, button, and then the very last one is for embed. So once she, she clicks on that, you automatically copy it. <laughs> and then you can share that somewhere. Yeah. So if I go to Blogger, so I just copied that. If you want to put that like in a Word doc, you can see what it looks like. Okay. Oh yeah, I can't log into Blogger from here, can I? I um, forgot about. Yeah, you can just log out of that. I can just log out, or just you know hit the X, close it. Well, I was trying to get into Blogger. You should still be able to, because you'd have to just don't log in as me. Mine isn't through my Oklahoma Press email. Yeah, that's okay. You can log in separately. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, you just, you, don't, you just don't want to do it that way. Just do my sorry. regular email? No, no. Um, close out of that and then just go to uh, uh, like Google and log in. Because uh, you have it through a Gmail account, right? Yes. Okay. And use your Gmail account to log in. Oops. Yeah, first you need to log me out. I think that's the problem. In the right hand corner, you see my name? Oh, Sign out. Yes, okay. So in the meantime, you could probably yeah. also touch on social media and how a citizen journalist or public relations people, they should be using um, social media to, to um, mm -hmm. communicate with newspaper editors and then also share links to their content. Yes, yeah, so for instance, um, I don't think it's going to work, but um, on Facebook, if you go to, if you search up here for Heritage, are you looking for a particular page? You're going to want like Celine Reporter. They're not. They oh, that's not one for. No, it's for each newspaper. So Celine Reporter or Chelsea Standard. Okay, there you so go. Celine Reporter has a Facebook page. <laughs> so this is one easy way to communicate with an editor um, without having to email one. It is just. Uh, I'm an administrator, so all that stuff's going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you can just post here 
and then um, we'll automatically be notified that you had written on our wall. Um, or you can send a private message and that'll come up. This is what editor's um, Facebook version of it looks like. So we see this is all the messages we've gotten. Um, so yeah, so if you do that, that's one way. And to post your blog or your business information or something you want to get out, it'll come up. Or suggest a story idea. Suggest a story idea. They'll come up on the side there so everybody can see that. Um, another way is if you have a Twitter account, I would, well, I would suggest everybody who has a business or um, who just wants to promote anything to get a Facebook page or a Twitter account or both, preferably. Um, and for Twitter, uh, if you put, all the newspapers have um, their own username, so you would put the at sign um, and then there's three names. So what one, what's the Heritage's? Is at there? Heritage News. Okay. Yeah, if you want specific papers, it'd be like at um, Dexter Chelsea, at Celine Milan News. Mm -hmm. They each have their individual, or they, there's an overall umbrella of Heritage News. So those are all different ways to contact editors, because there's always an editor checking what our at mentions are, because it automatically, I don't know, how many of you have a Twitter account? Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, ask how many of us who know how to use the Twitter account? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not her as much as you. Uh, so I can show you that. Um, I might be logged in on it. Okay, well that's good then. If you see my tab at the top. Oh, it is? Not, okay. okay, you can just go there and if you want to tweet okay. something. That's fine. Oh, it is me. Oh, no, it's a sign-in, so you can go ahead and sign-in. I guess I'm sign-in mine. Um, I'll sign-in so we'll press. Um, so at the top, there's the home, connect, discover, and me. So when you click on the at sign and the connect, when you click on that, you can see who has mentioned you in a tweet. Um, so this is the Open Presses account. So we get, so we have somebody that's constantly checking to see who mentioned us, so we know. If, uh, so we have, we can have conversations with people in the community on our Twitter account, and um, so we can see if there's any breaking news happening. And are those on the right? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, on the right, yeah. Okay, and that's the default when you go to the at? Yeah, that. Um, yeah, when you go to the app. it says mentions up there in the top left. So can you see other things as well as mentions or just mentions? Um, yeah, is there a difference between interactive? <laughs> I never even noticed the that. Same thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, think it's, I think it's the same thing. But. Oh, mentions. Interactions shows who followed you to. So okay. anything that really happened with your account. So if anybody followed you or tweeted to you, mentions are just if people tweeted to you or mentioned you. And interactions also shows if somebody just responded. Because mentions are just someone had mentioned you in a tweet had. Like there's an example, there's, I have a tweet there where I, I said join the Community Media Lab at 1 p.m. for a workshop on citizen journalism led by Monica. And I, so I used her at a, a draw handle, her Twitter handle, and then I mentioned the Oakland Press because she works there. So mm -hmm. I ended up in their feed. Yeah. So now it makes, them, it, it makes that easier for them to retweet it if they want to, to share mm -hmm. it. Or they could, you can also embed tweets in posts or in um, storefies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how, because there's so many tweets in the world, so um, that's how you can make sure an organization automatically sees it. Yeah, so if you hit view video or view media, you're going to see the video I created. So that was what was um, tweeted out, was the tel video promoting this workshop. So then the Oakland Press could easily just hit retweet. Um, Why don't you do that for me? <laughs> retweet it now, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone did. I think Stephen Steve, did. Yeah, okay. our editor did. <laughs> so yeah, so you just click.
now goes to their entire audience. So now if you go to home, on the home page is how you would manually type out a tweet. So you compose your tweet there, and when you click on the, your name, your screen name, then it'll show all the tweets you've already put out. So see, the first one is the one I just retweeted that Michelle did. Um, and with hashtags, um, that's a uh, like a word that you think would be searchable that other people would want to search for. So click on journalism. I use the hashtag journalism, and then you'll see other Yeah, so if you click on that, you, you'll see everybody who used that hashtag. Everybody used that hashtag journalism. In what time span? Um, just from the most yeah. recent to the latest. So I have, oh, you're the latest. I have quite a few in there, <laughs> just from this event. But um, yeah, you scroll down, you'll see a lot more from others. So that way, let's say that there are people out there just searching what's going on in the world of journalism today. They might search hashtag journalism, and then they're going to see some of my touts, um, which were tweeted out about this workshop. Yeah, so that's another way to get more views on any, because you can put the link in your tweet to whatever you want them to look at, and then if you put a hashtag on uh, important Gardening word, or whatever. Like, yeah, then if anybody clicks on that hashtag, they'll see you as one of the people who use that. So that's another way to get more people. I don't know if this, this is not a Twitter class, but I have a burning question. Yeah. Is there a place on Twitter where you can, um, is there an index of, Hashtags that are already there that you can trending. If it's a topic that's trending, yeah. And that's the only. So let's say like you know Miley Cyrus at the VMAs that I'm sure was trending that day. So there's no exhaustive list of hashtags anywhere really that you can look up. No. Well, it, you can look on your own under search. Yeah, and but look. I know that um, if you type in a hashtag, it'll give you like a recommended one that's already being used. Um, so if I do hashtag, I don't know, if I start typing in journalism, it would say like journal jobs. So these are all the most popular things that start with J-O-U-R. Oh, okay. So that's one way, mm -hmm. an easier way to do it than try to Google what are the most popular. Mm -hmm. um, so if I start typing, let's see if I start typing Miley, if I start typing M-I. It just seems like, you know, by now there, there must be infinite hashtag yeah. names. Mm -hmm. and, but you're going to find the most current information at the top. And it's okay. going to be infinite. Uh, so if you, go, if you scroll down, this, these are always the most popular ones are right there. Those are most popular. That's what's the trending page. today. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so those change, are changing constantly. And you can also change that so you can see, because um, this one is what are the trends in, in the United, over the whole United States. You can also change it so it's only what people are tweeting about the most in Michigan. So that's helpful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's one way. Is, is there any websites where you can check that stuff too? What is the website? I'm not as up to date on that. On what's trending now, but maybe if you Google trending topics on Twitter or something. Yeah. Like that. Mm. And there's a bunch of Twitter clients. You don't have to be Twitter on website. So a client is either a website you go through or a product for your phone that does what Twitter does, but something that's better. Mm -hmm. So if you type in like Twitter client, you may find a piece of software or web that you like better than Twitter's own database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. Are you talking about like Hootsuite or TweetDeck or something? Yeah. There's a whole bunch. There's yeah. a whole bunch. And a lot of the Twitter clients will be better for your specific needs. A lot of PR folks use Hootsuite uh, because it'll let you follow multiple Twitter accounts and multiple uh, keywords. But they're specialized um, clients. And that's why I didn't mention the name because if you look for a Twitter client, you'll find a whole bunch of clients. They're, they're all clients. It could be a software product for your phone or it could be a website. Like Hootsuite has both. 
the conversion for your iPhone or Android, the conversion for uh, it's, it's uh, web based. But if you search for client, there's also I, I use LinkedIn a lot, so I've got a LinkedIn client that I use. It's mm -hmm. better to go through LinkedIn to do certain things. Mm -hmm. So for each social media platform, you'll probably find a client, and some clients can handle more than one platform. Hootsuite, for example, will do other platforms besides just Twitter. Yeah, and then you can schedule your tweets and schedule your other social media posts. Yeah, that's what Time I Time and date. For, for <laughs> I don't know if I just want to go into it. Um, oh, there. Okay, so I, I um, connected my Twitter account with Hootsuite, so I, I know that one. That's the only one I really have um, experience with. Um, you can put your room. Yeah. Oops. I don't want to. Um, so one thing about this is I know for me I'll have like little amounts of times where I can tweet so I'll have like 10 minutes where I have time that I can tweet and then I don't have time the rest of the day so I'll have like a hundred if I can get like a, t like a lot of tweets right at one time then they'll each cover up each other and then they'll just be burst throughout the day so with Hootsuite, you can um, schedule it. So if you have a little bit of time in your day to tweet, um, so if you have a bunch of articles you want to put out on your Twitter, a bunch of blog posts, or a bunch of things that you've said and you don't want to put all out at once because you don't want them to each cover up each other or people won't remember you because they all came up on their news feed all at once. Or they'll start following you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so on Hootsuite, you can compose your tweet at the top and then you can schedule it for a certain time. So you could have, people would really see you all the time if once an hour, if in the morning, you just put like 12, 12 tweets and all you have to do is just type out 12 different tweets and it comes once every hour and people would really see you all the time. Is Hootsuite free? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, for basic. Certain, yeah. Just like everything else, yeah. right? Like LinkedIn, everything yeah. else. Yeah. Free to, yeah. Um, so that's the one. That's the easiest one, I think. And the well, for a single freest. Twitter account, the free the free version is great for a single Twitter account. That's mm -hmm. the free version is very powerful. It's not you can do this free, but it's not like cheap free. It's free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, did you guys have any other questions about Twitter and Facebook? Oh, yeah. I've got a question about. Oh, whatever. Okay, well, it can be a question about anything. Can you have a slide on the uh, delete sentence? What suggestions do you have for going for this? Um, like for the caption? No, I mean, one of the composition. Have, yeah, for composition. Oh, composition. Or what, what, what does an editor look at that says, hey, this is the kind of photo that we want to put in, this is one that we want to get the uh, you know, recycle bins. <laughs> I would say people, number one, right? Yeah. Have people, people in your photos. Yeah, we don't really like the front of a, of a building mug or just like, yeah, just. If there's people in it, we're more likely because it makes it more community based and because those people go out by paper. <laughs> so, yeah, so if there's people, um, we like, we, we'll put either one in the paper, but we do like the ones where, like, it's not just a smiling, standing there and smiling because those are more exciting of a picture when they're doing something. Uh, but we will put, we've had all kinds of pictures in the paper, at least with people in it. Um, but we like, we like more for at least like the front page of the paper. People who are aren't just standing there like this, we're active. smiling. Yeah, so we're active or, um, yeah, like cause there was a there was one about like this girl who had cancer that was just in the paper, and there was like her mom kissing her, kissing her head, and it was just them standing there smiling together. So uh, yeah, kind of like that. The more the more it looks different and not just all the or shows emotion. Yeah, it shows emotion. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we do put the smiley pictures in too. So. I was going to say, if you want to minimize that, your PowerPoint might be on my desktop if there were links that you wanted to go to. Do you see it anywhere? The main times we, we use just a building, a picture of a building or something just stationary without people would be like if there's a fire or damage. That's the only time we really just use building. Where would it be? Um, somewhere on the desktop, I would think. No, I was if the picture by itself tells a story, it's probably a good picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we also have a lot of pictures by themselves too. Um, so if you 
don't have the story to go along with it. You just have a long, like a, a just a longer caption, but you don't have somebody where you can say the every that's like a really long story. Then you can just send that into. A lot of times we'll just print the picture and a big caption, and that's all that'll be in. Like we just have. I mean, like for every playoff game, the sports team will. Uh, We'll put something in the paper that asks people to send in your fan photos, and that's like one example. Is we'll just ask the community, or for Halloween, we ask people to send in their Halloween costumes, and then we printed all the community's Halloween pictures or their sports pictures, and it was on the front page of the paper. So it was just anybody in a Halloween costume was on the front page of the paper. I see it now. It's on the the right, where toward the bottom. Yeah, down a little bit more to the right. Yep, there it is. How does Heritage, because uh, you seem to be real community-based, Dexter, Celine, how do you guys compete with, like, MLive? Because, you know, it went from AnnArbor.com, right, to MLive? Uh, yeah, I mean, they converted their print product to Ann Arbor News again, but, yeah, right. pretty much just the MLive. I mean, so mm -hmm. how do you guys kind of fit in that space? Well, we're also a chain of um, newspapers, and yeah. there's a lot of sharing of information, and um, we also have th something called Thunderdome, which is almost like an AP um, wire for our company, so we're sharing, we're affiliated with the Denver Post and the Salt Lake um, Tribune and a number of um, other papers, San Jose Mercury News. So um, we have that ability as well to share national news stories, and you're going to find that on our website. And then um, just with like other papers across the United States, um, our print is shrinking as everyone migrates online. You're going to find a much bigger viewership online than you're going to find circulation in print. Circulation has gone about 50,000. For the Heritage Group, total, all eight publications, I think it's around 30,000, but online it's 500,000 page views um, a month. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, that's one thing, is even if, because it's a lot easier to get a story online since it's unlimited. So, even if you're just want to get a story online, which is easier to do because we don't have to we'll shove just, it in print. Yeah, we don't have the space constraints. Yeah. So um, even if you just want to say, hey, can I just write this article for online, which is more likely to be a yes, we do have a lot of viewers online. What, what's your print demographics like? Are, are, is your print trending older or is your print trending more family? What's, if you were to break down your print demographics in general, I don't even know if we have that information, but I would assume older. Yeah, at least yeah. at least the people who have um, who subscribe to it, maybe not as much. I mean, we have no way of saying like who goes out and buys at the gas station. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah, of the people who um, subscribe to it, yeah, it's older. And then in terms of families, I would think with the community newspapers, that would be the case. They're looking for like the sports, high school sports coverage, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And a lot of people buy the paper if their kids in it. <laughs> so we've noticed that. Yeah, I remember during the first call for um, sitting at a restaurant, I was writing some ads that I mean, one of your papers next earlier. And someone walked up and said, We send our papers to our kids who are in the who are troops. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your papers had a lot of community pull back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that that trend is still more today of everyone who's got a kid in the baseball team is buying the paper or subscribing to see their in the photo, hopefully, mm -hmm. maybe happen that week's uh, patients Yeah, but the, all that content's online now as well, so it's right. not, you so know, it's easy for them to access it if they're mm -hmm. in another country or another state now. But I know you're saying, like, a lot of times it would be they come and they buy gift subscriptions for Christmas right. for all right. of their kids right. who are grown now and have left the area. But now I just think it's, you know, it's the sign of the times is everyone can just go online for all that content. So they're just, the kids will access the DexterLeader.com and, and view the same information. So when you said old year casting, that is people really don't use a computer or right. traditionally got the additional paper or who are still subscribing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't see that. I, I still see like I live out in Brighton, so the artist mm -hmm. is one of those long standing mm -hmm. papers. And I just know that every you know, family in our soccer group and mm -hmm. our cross country group all get it. You know, again, they're they're active, right? And, but they're all very tech savvy. So mm -hmm. we, we are to the point where if your kid's getting the cover, everybody's texting each other saying you need a couple copies. Mm -hmm. So I still think, you know, there's 
you know, again, right. granted the numbers are down, right? right. And the paper yeah. size are down. I have yeah. papers from when I was in school, and they were this big, and there's, you know, 10 pages of sports. Right. So. Yeah, and in, and now I mean everyone wants to share it on Facebook, so they're going to share the online story of that the story about yeah. the kid who you know in the in the soccer game, and they're going to post that on their Facebook page, and that's going to get shared and shared and shared. Yeah, you know, there's just other you know, and I right. see that trending. But I still don't think I still think the people that are getting the paper are, are people that want to you know read it mm -hmm. every morning. You know, I don't do the free press like they used to, and I still get the Sunday. Mm -hmm. But you know, so yeah. Yeah. just depends on the person. Yeah. So I think that your revenue model is based not on subscriptions. Are you, are you getting are you getting your subscriptions audited or no? Yeah, they're audited. In okay. fact, I think okay. it was in last week's paper in um, Heritage what the circulation was for each publication. Okay. But yeah, we're really not involved in that aspect of it of the business. Yeah. What type of articles do you look for? Um. Well, we look for a lot of like events before they happen. So, um, because I've gotten a lot of, this is what happened at our, at our event last week, and that's less likely to be published because people don't really care about an event after it happened because they can't go. Um, so that's one thing that I always look for is, did it happen yet? Um, and just to have some kind of community tie to it. So if you're sending it to a certain paper, make sure it fits within that county. Um, because then it's more likely to be in the paper too. Um, also, if it's something that's unique, not just so and so became president of our company or something. If it's if it's a unique, if it's a, if you can find something unique about like it, he grew up in the community, yeah. or he gives back to the community. He gives back, yeah, like yeah, he gives back to the community. Like for for example, I was talking to an author this morning. She is in Wayne, and she wanted a story on. Uh, her writing her, her book. She's self-published. And I said, well, where are you from? She said, Wayne. And I said, we don't really have any newspapers that cover that area. And I said, but if you could find a local angle, like you're going to do a book signing at a bookstore in one of our local communities, or if you graduated from a college or university in one of our communities, or you grew up and later moved to Wayne, but you grew up in one of our local communities, you need to have a local hook. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's yeah one way. Or, um, yeah, or if it's they helped out the community in some way. Just something that would draw in readers that would make them more interested instead of just stating, this person not even from your community wrote a book. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe to like show an example, like maybe part of her life story that would make people more interested, like something sad that happened right. to Maybe her. she battled cancer, overcame yeah. that, and then she wrote this book. Yeah, yeah. so something that will make something more interesting that makes her different than another author. So, because that's the main thing we want to put is just something that makes it different. Newsworthy. It makes it newsworthy, yeah. Um, like, what kind of example, what kind of, what do you write press releases about? I don't write press releases. Okay. Well, what kind of? I don't write anything right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Um, so yeah, so I would just say something that is more newsworthy, something that either something that hasn't happened yet or something, yeah, that somebody would want to go to or something somebody would want to buy mm -hmm. or um, a person that's interesting in some way. Yeah, and this also the workshop is about citizen journalism, so not just like public relations people, but just like the average citizen. And you want to write a feature story, maybe of a neighbor who raises chickens and it's some sort of unusual breed or whatever your hook is, and and that's a hobby of yours. We're telling you we welcome your news and information and stories, so send it in. So maybe you're going to write a story about your neighbor. You're going to take her photo. Maybe you're going to produce a video. Maybe you do an audio cast. Um, all of that is welcome content, and um, we invite you to send it in. And one thing I always done is just, I would buy a paper that I was going to target things to for a few weeks just to see what do they tend to publish. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting a and even, even go to someone's blog, mm -hmm. what does that person to write about? If you can begin yes. to get a sense of what they want, what they think their readers want based on what they're publishing, there's a pretty good chance that your story fits that, that blog or that paper, they'll publish it. So sometimes it's just reading things that you think are places where you would look for your topic and get a sense of that editor, that paper, or that blogger, and you'll have a sense of I think I could have an angle that makes sense for that paper. It always comes to your mind. 
Um, so it was going to be sophisticated, but I've always been able to get myself published because I knew I took the time to learn what they what what their audience and their readers tend to um, want to read based on what they're publishing. Mm -hmm. And I think that just does does a service to the editor or the blogger. You took the time to read their stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we also have this. We also all have a business page, or has all the businesses that are opening, or featuring a business, or a business that's having an event. So that's like on a daily basis. We have our business or our money page. So that's another thing that you could write about as a business. Um, what else? For Veterans Day, we uh, we wanted people to send in ideas of notable veterans in the community. So if you pay attention to what the holiday is, and you have something mm -hmm. like Christmas event or somebody who dresses up like Santa every year. And like right now it's the 50th anniversary of JFK's mm -hmm. death so if you have any stories from that event or um, you know mm -hmm. we're creating like a timeline so we're incorporating audio, video, photos um, documents. Yeah so we're trying to find anybody who could say like where you were when you heard that and so with every little, everything that goes on mm -hmm. if you pay attention to holidays or like September 11th every year we can put together something of where were you um, when you heard about about September 11th. So if you have something that's tied to that, we always have whatever, like the historical aspects too, or something tied to any holiday. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me, because I, I tend to write months in advance, mm -hmm. I'll take old calendars and I'll just look, okay, what's coming up in three months? So I, I can see what holidays, and I'll predict them myself and mm -hmm. see what's coming up. Do I have a feed for that article in three months? I start writing it now. And I may not use the piece, but at least I know ahead of time, okay, that holiday's coming up, and I can start thinking about what I may want to write. That way you get some time. Right, yeah. like Black History Month, right, Martin Luther right. King Jr.'s birthday, all of that. National Pretzel Day, whatever it is. <laughs> but like, and they do publish calendars online, like all these things, like, you know, National Beer Month, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, I don't remember all that stuff. Yeah. I gotta look it up. But someone's taking the time to have that available so you can see ahead of okay, that's coming up next month. Do I, do I have a story that makes sense for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one way. Um, yeah. So basically, we're just encouraging you to become community yeah. contributors, and we welcome your news and information, photos, video, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're publicizing an event or an organization, or just, you know, writing a feature story, or a guest column, a letter to the editor, you know, any of that, or maybe you're a photographer and you want to create a photo uh, slideshow or some photos for our media center, you know, we welcome all content. And I think even for business, right, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, my company sells alarms, and our stickers on your front door, mm -hmm. but you can't just continually push on how great you are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody says content is king, so you have to kind of actually to learn what you know the people want to hear. And you know, people want to hear about fire safety when it's fire safety month. Like mm -hmm. you said, look at the calendar, and you, you do, uh, and you might provide an expert for that column or right. that piece. You know, mm -hmm. Christmas is coming up, and I have and I have to find it. We have a family tradition where we burn our Christmas tree. You know, okay. It's just it's something fun. My kids yeah. like their pyros. And when you see one of those things go up, you're like, if that were to go up in the house, I mean, it would be disaster. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying I'm put it up there, but fire safety for, you know, the holidays is huge. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Fire fit out of the top because it goes up in about 15 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's loud and it's, you know, it's very mm -hmm. exciting. My kids love it and it's a big thing for us. That would be a compelling video. Yeah. Be, that, that would be a great story. That right. would be a good story there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think even though you are living after a fire and then the whole oh. interior feature and some fire safety, and yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. And I think although you get too many emails for people pitching things, you still need content though. I mean, that's the thing is <laughs> papers need content, so don't you be discouraged that you're going to get a lot of pitches because they need stories, and that we don't. Mm -hmm. But yet, when, I agree that in the past yeah. when we have sent stories. Mm -hmm. Well, that's for print. So you're thinking print, yeah, the space is, there's space constraints. So it might not necessarily get in print, but it could get online or for the most part. Or they've just gotten lost, even though they were watching for them. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, that's why it's also important to put in your subject line, like Dexter this or Chelsea that. Make it so they, they recognize this as a local content. Yeah. yeah. Who is the editor now of the Dexter Leader? Uh, Nicole Seguin. If you just um, email editor at dexterleader.com, it gets to whoever's in charge at that time. We tend to cycle through a lot because um, it's 
uh, the smaller papers are a stepping stone for reporters and editors. Yeah, and um, well, if you focus focusing on a person, like maybe for your the fire alarm, if you could find somebody that could say like, I was saved because of my fire alarm. If you right. give an example of how you know the fire alarm saved their life, that would be a way to make it local. Or maybe somebody who, if I would have had it, right. my house wouldn't have burned down or something like that. Um, so yeah. Can you continue that discussion? I mean, maybe you gave us some really good recommendations on how to focus our content so it gets highlighted and eventually published or uh, mm -hmm. highlighted online. Is there any tips or information that you have where we could basically serve as experts? So you're doing a, you know, like a, a, a Christmas tree example, mm -hmm. where we, there's a way that we can build a relationship whereas you're writing a story, we've made this relationship where we have you know, kind of some back and forth where you'd actually call us, we get almost an embedded advertising almost in the story because mm -hmm. do you have any recommendations on how that or is that even a realistic goal? Um, well, I've, I've had like for some, if there's national events, we've had people email us and say like I could be an expert for that situation. Mm -hmm. So um, in that and also if you would like to write a column, you could actually write a column about that certain subject that you're an expert in. Because we have columnists, like regular columnists or feature or guest columnists. So you could ask and then we'd always know who you were mm -hmm. if you said I'm I am an expert in this subject. I want to give people information like how you said about how not to bring your house down during Christmas. Right. <laughs> Something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we get experts like what's well, something um, I think you constantly have to be reminding them. So when yeah. that situation arises, just email them and say, hey, I'm from your community, and I am an expert on this topic. I know this is trending in the news right now. I can serve as an expert. Mm -hmm. yeah. Essentially, just, I mean, so if we had a very narrow focus like home security yeah. or something, mm -hmm. could just reach out. instead of reaching out to you, what's the ways that we can present ourselves so you actually are so interested that you reach back out to us for those stories? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like when the the home the housing market was up, mm -hmm. I had a lot of like moving companies and realtors, they would all email me and say, Hey, the housing market's up, mm -hmm. we're an expert in that. So something okay. like that. Um, what else is there? Um, well you just become a subject matter expert, yeah. right? I mean mm -hmm. I I'm new to this alarm business, but our company's been around, so we know the people in Ann Arbor and we know the people there and so you know you just have to kind of create that you know expertise and so it might be for me the first arc like you know I present would be getting a quote from you know the longtime fire marshal get another quote for some, somebody in Dexter and then this is how you not you know try not burn down your house during Christmas mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and if you completed that whole package and sent it to us you've made our lives easier and it'll probably get put right on right. the can you talk more about the blogging? You mentioned earlier when you first started today about sort of a blogging tie in where someone had a, mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. Could you talk more about that? Um, yeah, a blog, like tying in with the newspaper? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Maybe I can answer his question a little bit. I didn't. Yeah, I, I could touch on a little. Are you going to find the website and just show yeah. them? Okay. So both Monica and I recruit blogging partners for 21st Century Media. Okay. So we're looking for people either to start a blog or who has an existing blog that we can add to our blog role. So under each tab on our website, and she'll show you, so business, news, lifestyle, we then have a drop-down tab and you'll find blogs. And then on those subject matters, we're going to have a link. It'll have the blogger's photo, it's going to have the title of their blog, and the last three headlines. And then people can click on that and go straight to their blog. So we're driving traffic back to the blogger, and in return we're asking that blogger to host our headline widget or RSS feed on the rail of their blog. So they'll drive traffic back to us. Mm -hmm. That's how the relationship works. And they're called blogging partners? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could reach out to either me or Monica, and we could set you up that way on our, blog, on our websites. Is your blog, is it on... On the specific area. It go under the drop down um, tabs. So news, life. Okay. 
Okay, so news. You see blogs at the right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So any blog that's news related. So you're going to see Stephen Fry's blog on uh, Fry on the News is under there. <laughs> And are your bloggers liking the relations that we're getting for both parties? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't had anyone complain. Um, they do ask, how can we make money? And we've had blogging workshops here mm -hmm. explaining okay. about Google AdSense and other sure, sure. yeah, affiliate marketing yeah. and that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's what it looks like. You'll see, um, like for the Media Lab, I, I write a blog about our activities in the Media Lab, which is hosted there. You see the, our logo, a description, and then our latest entries. If she keeps scrolling down see other um, community blogs. Um, so like the superintendent of schools and Celine has one we link to. That's okay. slow. It's the it's the website. It's got so many ads on it. It's slow. But if nothing else, it's another Oops. way to network there. and gain exposure. Yeah, There's exactly. Yeah. Blog. And then like I said, often, like if you call us, I have a regular blogger. Um, he's out of Waterford, I think, or Mil no, Milford, he, he writes on spirit spirituality and health. He'll say, I have a really good blog this week. Can you check it out? And if you want, you can use it in print. And then so we would repur we could call it repurposing it in print. Mm -hmm. um, and we have them um, uh, divided into news, lifestyle, sports, entertainment. What else is there? Why? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> drive you crazy. Yeah. You've got web, web pages from individual papers, and you've got the heritage. Mm -hmm. Are the blogs common across all those websites? Yes. Well, um, I mean, like, yeah, if, if you're a local, like I had Milan PTO, that's only on the heritage okay. site, it's not on Oakland Press. But if it's something that's um, interesting to everybody, it will go on all. Mm -hmm. Like we have somebody who will put blogs of coupons or something like that, mm -hmm. or the travel or and travel. food, yeah. and yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, those are, so you can signify, like, I want my blog on these three newspaper websites, or this one, or I want it on every Michigan uh, newspaper site. You can specify which ones you want. Um, so I think that helps. And it also makes you um, more likely to be searchable on Google if um, you're linked with us, because if places link to you, then they'll know that you're not a spammer. So if, place, if reputable places are linking to your blog, then it'll more likely show up on a search engine. So that also helps as well. And we have like guidelines. If you are interested, just email me or Monica. We can email you the guidelines. Um, basically, we're looking for three posts a week. Some people find that overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. You don't have to write like a 500-word essay three times a week. It could be your own blog post, maybe you're going to curate some content, a video from YouTube that's, and that you then comment on, or um, some, a, a photo that you've taken with a caption, or, you know, it doesn't always have to be um, a long written post. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's about it. Anybody else have any questions? So, is there a workshop for the partner blogging? Um, Do you have a formal way Talking about that topic, or do we just call you? Well, I, we, we've had them in the past. Yeah, isn't it the blogging 101 class? Yeah, <laughs> we, we hold it periodically. I'm going to be setting up new workshops in January, February, March. So I can I could probably set one up, but we just had one a month ago. Um, but you can also come into the lab, and we can do that. I can work with you one on one right in the lab, setting up the blog, linking it, you know, emailing you the guidelines, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one way to just sit down with us. We'll show you step by step how to make a blog and all of it. What blogging software do you, do you use for that? Um, usually Blogger or WordPress. Those are the easiest ones because they have um, already have the templates and you don't have to use HTML. Mm -hmm. Also, Tumblr is popular for pe people who are um, like photographers, more visually oriented. Mm -hmm. We also have a workshop we've done of how to make money. She's saying that how to make money with a blog. Mm -hmm. um, so we had that. Cause they're all like so, sp like sporadically, aren't they? 
Um, well, we did like a three-part series in mm -hmm. September, I think. Uh, um, basic blogging, intermediate blogging, and then monetizing a blog. Mm -hmm. So, so um, what's the website that people can check to see what the latest uh, workshops are? Is that the new hive one? Oh, no, Meetup. Meetup. Yeah, I don't know how everyone found us, but Meetup's the best place to go to find out about our workshops. So meetup.com and then... It's um, Southeast Michigan Media Lab at Spark East and Ypsilanti. And every time I post a workshop, it's there. Our, our next one is on Google Drive. And then I just got some dates. I'm going to be looking for our presenters for January through March. And then I'll be posting those on Meetup. So it looks like I'm hearing maybe a blogging workshop. Any other suggestions of workshops you'd be interested in? Blogging uh, and like Facebook. Not as, Social media? Yeah, as a, a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. yeah, like Facebook as an entity rather than as your personal self. Mm -hmm. Like, that um, would be a great workshop. How do you use it as other than for to market. pictures of your nephew? Mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh -huh. But in a business sense, that would be a great topic. Yeah. What about LinkedIn? Or do you guys feel comfortable with LinkedIn? Or maybe it doesn't serve you. I had mm -hmm. one on there. It's, it's somewhat separate. I would feel the blogging and. Yeah, well, I have one, two, three, six workshops I need to set up. So I'm just wondering what the interest level. I'm definitely interested in LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah. Facebook, and blogging. So, if, yeah, something that you're saying is that you can tie in the marketing to the Facebook. Mm -hmm. Because people, most people have a Facebook, use it personally. People get tired of it many times. But if you can use it for a different purpose, marketing to the business or such. Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. and how do you create a, a Facebook community as opposed to your personal page? You have others engaged in your Facebook. And after those workshops, mm -hmm. maybe a workshop on you know our Hootsuite type product and and just giving examples of how you integrate all of your social media by using one of those things okay. um, and how that. Um, all kind of comes together because I'm kind of with Kathleen as far as you know. I barely know what a widget is in my limited WordPress experience, mm -hmm. and just to hear it and even maybe you know go to a live thing is one thing, but actually giving us a chance to hands on do it, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that really I think creates a level of understanding that particularly you know maybe middle age, we'll say, adults are not, you know, we are not, um, it's not inherent in our, you know what I mean? It's like, there's a learning curve there that really has to be explained for older adults who have lots of experience and things to write about, but really need the technical mm -hmm. stuff to be kind of, uh, it's a, I think it's a longer learning curve than, than People who've been doing it all their lives realize. But don't get caught up in the, the delivery method, right? Just write. If you want to be a blogger, you got to write. I mean, yeah. there's there's a lot of you know. I mean, there's some great articles on just write. You know, if you listen and ever look at just writers, they get up and they just write. And then videos, same way. I mean, the great thing now is your iPhone can take great video. And the iPhone is a great camera. So just create content, right? And then, you know, and it won't matter what format. These guys can set you up in a minute, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a blog. So don't worry about HTML. Don't worry about, you know, just get the content. And then, then these guys will help you push it out there. Yeah, because the setting it up part is the hardest. Once you set it up, it's not, you just go to the create new post, type it in, and push publish. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's the setting up part that's difficult. So that's the only part that once you got to set up, then you never have to do that again. It's a, creating is hard part, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Writing the articles, creating the video, editing the video. I mean, yeah. all of those things. That's the time. Mm -hmm. Pushing it out for the masses is the easy part. And then promoting it, you know. Then then that would be the next step is how to promote it. Like these guys are saying is retweet and retweet and find you you had a great idea of find who like different areas and, you know and so did you just like what up you know soccer youth soccer I just tweeted out my video on youth soccer that I shot a year ago 
Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, might as well practice what you guys are preaching. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. I wonder, I think often I'm confused, and a suggestion for maybe it's ours, mm -hmm. which platform to use? Because for me, when I have a business, the business client, we only use LinkedIn. We use nothing else because it works the best. But mm -hmm. the business to consumer client, we make different choices. I think that I have seen people go to seminars and learn all about Twitter, mm -hmm. where it was the wrong space for them, the wrong wrong social media to use. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what, you know, I'm not part of the meetup group, so I'm not sure if you can good feedback, but I think for many people, they should first figure out if they could only do one, which would be the right one. And then from that, they go to that train, when they get that out of their belt, they go to the next thing. Because mm -hmm. for some customers, it's just, you know, or, or, or individuals, it's just um, blogging, maybe plus link, or just a couple. But I think that I've seen plenty of small business owners or individuals try to learn everything, and that's mm -hmm. really hard. They get overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and they, they, they spend a lot of time learning to tweet when it's, it's an appropriate platform for them. Mm -hmm. So that's just my opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm working with a business person around. She's starting a new business, and then within her business, she has like three or four divisions, and she wants to set up separate Twitter accounts yeah. for all of them, separate Facebook pages, and I'm like, you understand, you're going to be tweeting and Facebooking yeah. all day long. Like, I don't know if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who wants to read all that stuff? <laughs> yeah. One of the other things to consider is... Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to create a, a place for people to go to, or are you mm -hmm. trying to get your information out? Because, again, it's kind of weird. What do, you, what do you do? If you want to get your information out, you're probably not going to want to just set up a, a website because there's so many people are going to come to you. It's more like hosting someone and coming in, which you may want to do for other reasons, but trying to promote yourself, it's, it's got to be a more outwardly focused one. And if there are any experts in the room who are interested in being a presenter here at one of these workshops, I'm always recruiting, so come see me. And that's a good thing about social media is you, if you make that website to get people to actually go to it. Yeah. So websites are good because there's only so much space you can put in a tweet. So if you say, yeah. go to this website where there's a million other word, million yeah. words on the subject. So I would say don't not make a website. I think websites are helpful. Is what you're trying to do, and how you're trying to reach people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how you get people to go to your website. <laughs>